How about an impromptu live stream on a, a random Wednesday? We typically do not go live uh, for these lunch. Is this even called a lunch and learn? I would just say this is a casual chat um, amongst men here between Ben and Jace on the Domo uh, on the Domo live stream, essentially. So we'll just uh, leave it at that. We have an exciting session for you. I interesting story. So. Uh, we have uh, lots of places of communication, obviously, the, the Domo community where you can find great answers. There's a Domo user group Slack. And someone had brought up like, uh, hey, I'm filling out my bracket. And I stumbled upon this blog post from Jace, uh, who wrote an amazing tool to talk about like all of the upsets, what the dashboard looks like as the, the big bracket essentially tips off, right? So I'm like, what, did this exist? So I'm, you know, diving into it. I'm reading the blog post. I'm, I'm diving in the data and I get very angry because as a, as, a, as a Hoosier, I know that Indiana has won five national championships. So I immediately reach out to Jason. I say, hey, your data's off. I'm, I'm not happy. I'm sharing this with friends because a lot of the things I think Ben and, and Jace kind of know working for Domo, when you're chatting with people that aren't, aren't the data folks uh, out, outside of the world, they're kind of like, what in the world does, Do does Domo do? So this is like an amazing example that I could send all of my friends and say, hey, remember when you keep asking me, you know, what Domo does and I tell you and you're like, we don't have a clue. Uh, this is exactly what we do. See, we do this really fun thing where we can show you all of the data about things that are happening in the NCAA tournament. And it will help you, hopefully, uh, whether it be with your office bracket challenge pool or you're really rooting for the underdogs. Uh, that's kind of our goal today. But I just, I was very upset with Jace. And Jace reminded me that uh, he only he only made the data set go back uh, about what, what was it 40 years yeah for four decades four decades That's... which hurts my heart a little bit because they're you know basketball existed before that and indiana won a lot of championships but that's okay uh we'll just we'll see it as one on all of the things that he's showing off and of course ben's got the minnesota hat Jace, Minnesota fan. We are definitely representing the Big Ten. I've got my candy stripe pants on. Didn't think you'd nice. see my today on the live stream, but you did. It happened. So, uh, Ben, I'm going to kick it off to you. Uh, we've got lots of folks joining us from YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and our good friend Mark Booth has already started this live stream by saying Indiana is still trying to be relevant. I don't love that, Mark, as you are my boss, but I will keep my mouth shut as I like a paycheck. Uh, also, our good friend uh, here on YouTube says happy hour and learn. That's right. We are, we're, we're having a little bit of a happy hour today as we're, this will just be a silly session about the NCAA tournament and the brackets. Uh, but I'll get out of the way. And I'll let Ben and Jace tell you all the fun stuff about this really cool Domo on Data blog that they created and dive into the ways that they connected some of this data to help you as you fill out your bracket. So hopefully this gives you some last minute tips and tricks before the game start tomorrow. Ben, how are we doing today? I, I'm great. It's, it's happy hour and learn. That's how we're rolling. Yeah, I um, love it. I don't know. I was trying to find. I might have... Somewhere, so I, my undergrad is at Penn University, of Pennsylvania Quakers, who have not made the tournament in a little while here. Um, the Gophers, my graduate alma mater, uh, have not um, fared much better this year. <laughs> Alas, <laughs> not sure if any school in the state of Minnesota has made it to the tournament this year. At least not not the Division One tournament, not the NIT tournament. Um, but yeah, happy to be here. You know, we we started uh, doing the Domo and Data blog. Um, about a little over a year ago. And it came out of, you know, when, when COVID came, so we're almost at three, probably almost exactly the three-year anniversary of COVID. Um, you know, Domo, we started looking at how can we compile some of the COVID data and we created a tracker. Um, we got a lot of traction there, right? Started as just a basic Domo embed page. And then we sort of had a fancier, prettier HTML using Domo everywhere in bed. Um, it really just saw the resonance of it, but also how it highlighted the power of the Domo platform to quickly get different data, blend data, productionalize it, um, get it out to people without needing an army of engineers. And sort of out of that learning, we realized, you know, it's, there's something really powerful and relevant about exploring data in different ways. And we wanted to um, be able to do that on a more regular basis. And so sometimes we do things that are serious, uh, like COVID or inflation. Um, sometimes we're less serious, like this tournament, 
uh, the Olympics, uh, the World Cup, Taylor Swift in the Billboard charts. Uh, what are people watching on Netflix? Um, and again, it just it really highlights that flexibility of the noble platform. So we, it's a great way, like Eddie said, to tell your friends what your company does, but also um, sort of get the word out there. And obviously, there's there's other parallels um, in, in other you know to other real business problems or real world problems that we've looked at um, through the years. So it's been fun. I will say that one thing, just for all you guys out there um, trying to do these kinds of things on your own, we do. Um, most of this without a lot of HTML development. So we had our developers add, um, we use WordPress. And so they added a little bit of code that does some auto sizing of the iframe, right? There's an auto height thing. It's on developer.domo.com. I can post it out there um, in a minute, but that's really all we had to do. And then we, Jason and I go and find data and, um, you know, try to think about what's interesting there and then copy the embed links and put it into a WordPress article and boom, it's on the interwebs. Uh, so excited to have Jace walk through a little bit about how you can use it. I still I have one bracket done. I have another one. I just got the 19-hour um, email notice from someone, from a buddy who runs one out in D.C. Uh, but we'll see if this does. And I, and I guess I was thinking, should we have people send a cut of their winnings to Jace if uh, if they're successful using his, the data? And maybe, you know, I don't know if yeah. that's no sure yeah. in our uh, company policy either, but they, they could at least give them a a hug next time they see him or something. So, you know, <laughs> turn it over to already, you and let you walk through it. Yeah. I had already, uh, I already kind of punched the ticket, right. To submit my brackets in on, on a few, we've got some friends pools. We've got some family pools, uh, oh. you know, punch the ticket on a couple of them. And then I found out this exists this morning and, you know, completely, <laughs> completely halted thinking that I was finished. I'm going to spend more time yes. tonight you know, diving into all the things that Jace has done, obviously. That's a big debate. Do you have more than one bracket? Do you have more than one bracket? Yeah. The same Is that pure Diversify. Or not? I mean, you can have a whole other uh, yeah. conversation. But right. go ahead. Well, and see what we got, and it, you can walk from the guts of it, too. Yeah, it also, well, it also depends a lot on what the rules of your, the bracket you're in on. Like, do what do you get for upsets? Some people just say you just get the point for the win, and others say you actually get uh, points due to the, used to be, uh, one I did points for the difference between. Uh, so the bigger the upset, the more points you got. So uh, anyway, thanks, Ben. So, you know, as Ben mentioned, we we do have a blog post, uh, our Domo Data blog, where we post sometimes uh, some, I wouldn't say silly, I think this is pretty, pretty important. Um, but we do have some information in here, uh, you know, on the NCAA tournament coming up. We have uh, kind of two parts to, uh, you know, what we built here, the first is kind of the upset assistant. It just has a little bit of data. Oh, I better move that up because our pictures are in the way. Um, so it just has some information here on kind of the most common upsets. Uh, you can look at the upsets by round. You can look at the upsets by year. So this is, again, going back a little over four decades now. Um, so added in last year. And of course, we had one year where there, where there was no tournament. Um, in here, if I wanted to come in here and maybe say, like, I just want to take a look at the, you know, like last like five or six years of, of tournaments or, you know, five, six years of, you know, uh, basketball, whatever. Um, I can see in here, you know, nine versus eight or nine upsetting eight is the most common. Uh, 15 total upsets in the last, uh, what do we have, seven years or seven tournaments uh, tied actually with 11 over six. So 11 upsetting six. I always think it's a 12 15. over five. I, that is that, I think I five. think recently there have been some pretty significant 12 over fives, they were saying. But uh, most people probably think number nine, uh, upsetting number eight, most common. It obviously is. Uh, but then people would probably guess 10 over seven, and it, it's not. 10 over sevens actually apparently don't happen as often. Uh, 11 over six is probably your sweet spot, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, let's check the last like four years or so if I just do that there. No, not 12 over five, still 11 over six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, maybe you're just hoping. I, well, I think no, a lot I, of people are hoping. That's, no, that's definitely something you always hear, right? The 12 over five is the, you got to pick, you got to pick the 12s over fives. That's the most common. Um, but the data doesn't lie, right, Jason, Ben? Yeah. Is that what they, like yeah. data, yeah. data doesn't lie. Hey, so we're looking yeah. at the last four decades of data. So every pundit that you hear talk about the 12 over five, according to, to, to this, it is yep. the nine over the eight or the 11 over the six, uh, which is yeah. really interesting. That, that's something that definitely stood out when I saw it earlier. Yeah. 
I think I think maybe this year a lot of people want a twelve over five because I think Duke is Duke is a five seed this year, right? So it just might be a lot of Duke hate. Uh, so yes, so that's that. probably what you're getting uh, in that this year. So anyway, you can come in here and you can take a look at you know first rounds, uh, second rounds. Again, trying to figure out like let's just say what is our second round. Uh, you know, in here, eleven over three is probably the most common. Wow, five over four, interesting. Okay, who knew? Uh, again, well, I guess I mean it all, it all connects, though, right? Because if you have a, if, if the yes. is a more common offset, they have a chance yes. to get over the five, right? So it's you know, exactly it all exactly. all plays into itself. Yep. Um, so that's that's uh, that's just one part of of what we built uh, out here, kind of taking a look at the NCAA tournament. Uh, the second part is just more of a uh, kind of a historical stats. Uh, up at the top of this year, we have just historical stats on the national champions again over the last four decades so i know uh and he was quite upset that indiana wasn't larger here but i did remind him that ucla would be massive if we went uh yes. further further massive. back so massive. uh at the moment we have north carolina and duke uh yeah. sharing up there uh minnesota minnesota no ben i don't know very ben, tiny don't, <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> Uh, we also have total tournament games one again. Minnesota is oh look at that right there, thirteen. Yes, those wins did happen despite what the NCAA says they uh, they did happen at Washington. Yeah, this, does this include games that were vacated? That's right. The cheating scandals. Okay, that's right. Yep, <laughs> uh, they happened historically. No judgment uh, from Jace on it though. He's just reporting. I watched them on TV. That's right. That's right. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then probably the thing that might be a little more interesting uh, to most people is, is some historical data around team specific uh, stats in here. So you can select, you know, year round team or uh, favorite opponent in here, and it gives you all sorts of information around that. So if we if we pop up uh, Minnesota, we're going to go ahead and see that Minnesota has actually is 50-50 in the tournament over the years, right? So they have a 50% win rate, their favorite opponent, they played Louisville three times, UCLA twice. Uh, and down here, especially for the more recent games, we actually have links to then uh, the game uh, for uh, game over at the NCAA site, and they have all sorts of interesting statistics. And I invite you to go ahead and click through that uh, to go to their site and, and get information around that. Um, if I go ahead and I get rid of that and I type in, ooh, I do feel dirty doing this. Uh, Indiana, a slightly it's higher low. win percentage here. Slightly wow. higher win percentage. Ooh, that's a lot more opponents, probably Easy. because you've you've actually been to the tournament in the last decade, whereas Minnesota. Well, has been not not there recent. once. Yeah, but wow. more recent than us. Yeah, um, 57 percent win rate. Uh, most common opponent, Kentucky. That right. Makes sense, right? They like that. They like yeah. to match those teams up because that's a a big rivalry, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. And then coming in here, we have uh, sorry, Ben was at Penn State. Penn, uh, not Penn so State, Jace. Not, come on, they're not going to let me. They're not going to be back for reunions, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was That's the same joke I made before. Right, investment portfolios. Yeah, same joke I made <laughs> before. Um, eight percent win rate. Uh, so yeah, it looks like well, you've been. For a while, well, I graduated in 2000, and it's before yeah. that that they won one. Most, most um, recently, well, I'd say you're we, close we, to Minnesota. Let, let's see, you're mentioning, mentioning the Duke hating. Um, let's let's look at opponent of Duke. Get rid of the the. Just show yep. people where they can clear out yet, and then yep. When people play Duke, probably not going to be a very good percentage. You're going to lose a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So people have won 23 percent of the time against Duke. Wow. Yeah, um, and then we have a list of all the again, games here. Yeah. Everyone playing against. I guess one of the really nice things here, and we can show. I mean, like this is right. If we want to make a change, or if someone, I mean, maybe we'll get some. Uh, um, no, Anthony. Uh, uh, we, maybe we'll get some some comments here. Like, oh, I wish I had a filter here. It's just as easy as changing Adobe dashboard, right? So it's not. You know, we could go change the color right now. We could add a new drop down, a new filter. It would take us two seconds, which is oh yeah. Um, uh, you know, which is just nice part of, again, part of the power of what we do here and not having to bug in. I'll tell you what was interesting to me. If you scroll down a little bit, Jay, so we we're close to the uh -huh. bottom of this page, aren't we? I think it was at the bottom. Yeah. We do have a little bit more. 
the historical, here. yeah, the historical data. You can scroll back up to the most common upsets and upset victories, but scroll down to that little. Go down just a little bit long, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. There we go. Stop right there. So where it says upsets in the historical years, right? The number of upsets. To me, and again, data dummy. I, I'm yep. looking at. I, it, like it feels very cyclical, right? Like, so you've got a big, after a big year of upsets, it's almost like there's this massive drop off. So like 90, 90 to 91. And then I see like 2000 to 2001. Then I see 2006 to 2007, like where you have, you know, 20 plus, where you get any 20 plus upsets, like the following year seems to be like a, like a rebound. Right. Um, so like I'm thinking about that because in 2022 we were over 20. So I'm like, oh, typically it's not, it doesn't gain. There's a couple of times where it stays the same, but mostly there's like this huge drop off the next year. So maybe we won't see a lot of upsets this year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it, interesting. Yeah, it's possible. Um, like, yeah, a lot of times the, the <laughs> 20 row streak. Um, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, that twenty. There, there, there tends to be under twenty, you know, uh, upsets in the in the tournament. So anytime you get over twenty, it's generally going to drop off. Um, depends on how it looks like. Twenty fifteen, there just weren't that many. That's interesting. I do remember reading that uh, uh, generally you don't see number ones. I don't think it. I don't think it either. It hasn't happened, or it's only happened once. I can't remember. Yeah. Number ones making it to the. Uh, like 15 floor, so. versus two is very rare. And then number one, number yep. one. Yep. So upset. I, I was, I was with a, a Tar Hill fan this, this afternoon, Corey Patton from our partner, Pramata labs. And, and he was very sad that they were the first preseason number one to not make the tournament. So if we wanted to check North Carolina, just for him, we can send him the, the, the live stream yeah. later. Most most common upsets you can see sixteen versus number one only happened once, of course, and that was UMBC. That's right. No, so, so and then you could join the show. We, you could export some of this data too if you want to. Yep. Um, so if you come up above, here, right? So yeah. click in there. I can go ahead download. Uh, it'll go ahead and allow me to download that, uh, and I can download the data that I have uh, filtered down to. So. Yeah, very interesting thing um, that we created. Um, maybe talk just a little bit about kind of how some of all this came about and kind of how we're actually grabbing the data. So part of this uh, came about in just a bit of a thought experiment, right? So we talked about how easy it is to get data into Domo and how easy it is to manipulate data in Domo. Now, the easiest way for us to get data uh, probably would have been to subscribe to a service. Uh, but sometimes like being a little bit scrappy, we know oftentimes our customers are struggling with some data, uh, you know, uh, data quality issues uh, and wanted to kind of do something like that. And, and I do have a, uh, there's another blog post um, if you want to search for it, um, March Madness Redo, creating a data app that talks a little bit more about this as well. Um, but for the most part, what we ended up doing um, is creating uh, using our Jupyter Notebook integration. Right, and using Beautiful Soup, which is a, a library that exists inside of Jupyter, um, and you can go ahead and kind of scrape some uh, scrape some some website data. Uh, uh, during COVID, uh, the NCAA went ahead. Uh, someone at the NCAA went ahead and basically like uploaded all forty last forty years or so, so four decades. That's kind of where we got the data of the of the NCAA brackets. There are some errors in that data. Uh, so we had to go ahead and and uh, and create an ETL that fixed some of those errors. Um, but this is basically all we did. Just some code in here. I can post this code um, over time. Um, you know, scraping these uh, uh, the older tournaments are often in a different format. The route names are different. Um, there are different numbers of teams. So uh, <laughs> used to be like thirty two was um, simple. Right? Yes. Yes. It was a lot. It was a lot different before, uh, you know, before things really blew up. So, in here, we we just brought in some of that data, and then I think, um, you know, showing our magic ETL tool here, uh, we just went ahead, kind of appended that data together, made some changes to it. You can see in the formulas here, um, looking for the the round names. So taking the round names and all their different, you know, variations, kind of making them, you know, similar, so we can do some data analysis. 
and and then outputting that and then and then building our visualization and our, our dashboards on top of that and that's kind of how we did it again scrappy you know scraping some stuff off uh the interwebs as ben said before and then uh you know doing a little bit of data prep as basically you know everyone has to do yeah so I, you can't this. i mean if data was perfect i don't know what we would do we probably wouldn't have jobs but it's you know <laughs> even something as quote unquote simple as this is not as perfect as we like so we need to have that muscle to clean things up and and, and go out there so Exactly. Yeah. When Eddie, when Eddie, when Eddie came to me claiming that there was an error in the data, I thought, "Oh, yeah, probably an error in the data." Uh, but <laughs> yes. Oh, it's then I saw, then I saw, then I saw India, and I was like, "Ooh, bad news." Yeah. Well, unfortunately, you know, I, I just wanted you to be as accurate as you could be. There are five banners hanging on that wall, and not one. Uh, but that's okay. I understand that we got to be, you know, recency biased. We're being a little relevant here as, as time's gone on. No, this is Let's awesome. Let's talk about hockey. hockey Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Minnesota, number one team in the country. Uh, so here's the deal, guys. This is just one of the many ways that I think when I see the tool do really cool stuff, I'm like, oh, I want to get, let's get them on a live stream, right? Let's get them on immediately. Let's talk about this. It's very relevant. It's very topical. I think a lot of people might get a kick out of kind of seeing this if they haven't seen it for the first time. Obviously, the Domo on Data blog blows up with all kinds of these really cool, like Ben said, they're always trying to find, even if it's just like pop culture or something in your daily life that we're kind of tying data to. I know for most folks, they're, they might be watching this and they're like, they, they want to see all the fun stuff on the dashboard and then they get into the nitty gritty about creating it and they're going, oh, I, know, I don't know, a little deep for me. Um, but there are also folks that are like, oh, I could do that in my own job to our own industry that might create some topical conversations built around what a dashboard can tell, right? And telling these data stories are, are super important. And I know as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, I'm I'm in immediately. We got to get folks involved. There was lots of conversations on the on the community user group. So I do appreciate Ben and, and Jace, both of you guys' time and uh, good banter here as we look at the big tournament coming up in a few days. Uh, excited to share, you know, at least our data set with lots of folks on that blog post. I did link those in the comments and chat section below. So wherever you might be, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, you'll be able to click those links and find these blogs immediately. Um, but keep doing this. Don't stop because this is really fun. I think this is the, the fun side of what we get to do with the tool that we have. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, again, this was an impromptu one. We put this together very quickly today. I uh, appreciate Ben and Jace being with us. Uh, we do have our community meetup tomorrow. Uh, so obviously it gives me a, I'm going to shamelessly promote our events. We've got our community meetup tomorrow. Really excited about that tomorrow evening. Uh, and then we'll be doing uh, more lunch and learns next week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Lots of folks coming in. Anthony says, thank you guys. Well done. We've got Jason Altenberg, our, our good friend, Jason. Let's go Michigan state. Another big 10. It's always I a mean, good pick. Always a good pick. What is happening yeah. right now? Bring, I mean, bring it, bring it up B1G. Let's look at Michigan State. That's a good one. And uh, Mark's non grass, always a good friend here watching us on YouTube. Very timely and fun to see the data in action. I, I couldn't agree more. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. You can check us out next week on these uh, exciting live streams. Appreciate it, Ben, Jace. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys.